Okay, this is our introduction into InDesign. And InDesign is a little different than uh, both Photoshop and Illustrator. It's used for print um, almost exclusively. There are a few things with CS4 and CS5 that um, you can use to make websites and a couple other things like that. Um, but prim primarily it's used for everything print. And most of the time it's used for things uh, that print that are over one page. So for example, if we're doing a one-page newsletter, I'm probably going to do it in Photoshop. Um, maybe, maybe not. I may do it in, in, in design because it you know, may turn into two pages. Um, definitely like an advertisement that is a partial page I'm going to do in Photoshop. Um, banners, anything like that. Um, any uh, vector shapes, I'm going to do an illustrator and I'm going to pull into either Photoshop or InDesign, and I'll show you how to do that in the advanced class. So InDesign is really used for um, newsletters, things that are multi-pages, uh, newspapers, magazines, brochures, catalogs, books, all those kind of things that you have text going from one page to the next. And that's where really where uh, InDesign shines. It's where text goes from page one to page two or page you know five to page seven. I'm sure we've all seen those uh, magazines where you're reading and you're on page 10 and it says this story continues on page 52. Uh, InDesign does a really, really excellent job of managing that for us after we set it up right. So as long as we set it up right, it'll manage that for us and if the story changes, uh, if, that, if that article changes, it's really easy to update in InDesign um, and know that it's done perfectly without any errors. Uh, and that's important because a lot of times these things get switched out last minute. So we'll go into the um, actual tools and everything like we did in Illustrator in just a second. What I want to go over first is um, how InDesign handles the files differently. Okay, So in Photoshop, if we were to make this, um, this newsletter that you see on the screen here, you notice that um, we have a bunch of items. We have uh, some graphic bars that are vectors, just vector shapes that we've talked about. Um, we have uh, actual images in both uh, pictures, and we have an image of the logo. We have um, different shapes, all things that could be done in Photoshop. But in Photoshop, if we were to do it in Photoshop, this would all be included in one PSD, one Photoshop file. And that Photoshop file would be fairly large. It would be probably 25 or 30 megabytes because think about each picture that Photoshop has to um, handle and it has to keep track of each of these pixels. So it's keeping track of each of these pixels for uh, five, six, six pictures. And then it's also doing that for the text and everything else. So the benefit is it's all in one file, and that's the exact opposite of how InDesign works. InDesign, actually, the InDesign file, and let me pull up uh, a Windows document here, our Windows Explorer folder. So the InDesign file, which I have one here, this, uh, this file is called Newsletter. You can see it's an InDesign file, and it's three megabytes. So how it works is when, it's, when you see this picture, InDesign says, um, go and find that picture at this location. And this particular picture is found under images, and then it's found under um, 0246 OHB. And you can see that it, it is scooted over here. It's four and a half megabytes. So if this was put in Photoshop, you would have four megabytes plus three megabytes plus three megabytes plus whatever else you put in there. So you're talking, you know, your file size adds up. And really what InDesign started is uh, desktop publishing where your computer didn't have enough gut to display everything. So InDesign showed a low res version of uh, your image and just linked to it so when you finally exported it and sent it to the printer it would be perfect but you could at least set it up and align it and do all the things you needed to do to make your magazine or your newsletter. Um, but with computers getting faster uh, a lot of people are leaning to doing it in Photoshop I, I would agree in some respects but I would mostly disagree um, by doing everything in Photoshop just because InDesign shines 
uh, in so many aspects. So that's one part of the files that InDesign links to, what we, we'll call linking to, and I'll, I'll show you how to uh, actually what's called package these together a little later. The other thing that it links to are fonts. So you type in a font here, you type in your title, the trail news, you type in uh, any of these things, you'll see that um, you actually have the stuff that you've typed in, it remembers that for you, and that's part of the size of the InDesign file. But you also have a font. So this font, is, Trail News, is very different from this font here. Um, so what InDesign does is it remembers that this this text used st uh, stencil standard font. So it said, um, put the type this here and then use this font. So what it does is it goes out, and this is another Windows Explorer um, panel. And it goes out and finds that stencil standard bold font. So you can see this stencil standard is this stencil standard in your fonts folder. And now in the Mac OS it's a little different and in um, Microsoft uh, Windows XP it's, it's a little different where you find the font folder but it's the same thing. Now Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign they all do this similarly but when Photoshop um, loads up if it doesn't have the font it will let you know and it will create a raster version of the font. It will create a pixel based version of the font the best it can. InDesign won't. InDesign will just will just um, go back to, to the default font. So that's important to know. Okay, so it handles things a little differently. Everything's not included. Even though it looks like it's in one big file, it's not. And that, that'll become important and imperative uh, as we go down the road here, as we start adding things. And you'll see why that's more important. 